Nemo Radio is on the air. A, B, C. A, always B, B, C. Closing. Always be closing. Always be closing. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Put that coffee down. Coffee's for closers only. Come after me! I'm a man! I'm 40! Hey, it's John Nemo. Welcome back to another episode of Nemo Radio. Fascinating story that caught my attention, and I knew I had to talk about this. Imagine if you could take your business and go from having an audience of 47 people watching you or working with you to 47,000 people, right? (laughs) Like, okay, what happened here? What's going on? And that's exactly what Deion Sanders is doing at the University of Colorado with their football team. Now, I realize if you're not a sports fan, you might not have heard of this story, but it illustrates this amazing concept about how to disrupt your industry. Really, this whole idea of how can I differentiate myself from everyone else in the industry I'm in? How can I disrupt everything and then reap the rewards and the benefits? So it helps to look at someone else doing it. And we all know the familiar stories, right? You can talk about how Netflix came in and disrupted the movie rental industry, right? And how, you know, Blockbuster once upon a time was king and we all got in our cars and drove, you know, to a place and waited in line and rented videos. And then Netflix was like, hey, we'll just mail you the video. You don't even have to leave your house. And now, of course, then they led the way with streaming. Now we'll just beam the video into your device. You don't even have to, you know, wait for the mail to come. And how Airbnb really revolutionized the, you know, hotel industry. Uh, Uber, you know, really revolutionized or disrupted the taxi market. There's all these different examples of it. And the latest and greatest is happening in Colorado right now in college football. Colorado, if you're not familiar with college sports, they uh, have been down and out for years. Nobody goes to their games. There's no interest. The team stinks, right? And so they were really trying to make a a splashy hire and and turn the program around. And they hired Deion Sanders, who's this former NFL superstar, very flamboyant personality. You know, he was called Neon Dion coming out of college and he played in the NFL and was, you know, Hall of Fame caliber and won Super Bowls. And he was just a, you know, level 10 trash talker, self-promoter. I mean, you couldn't go anywhere. He played two professional sports in the same day. So he played a football game for the Atlanta Falcons uh, that afternoon. And then he took a helicopter, because why wouldn't you, over to the baseball stadium and played a night game for the Atlanta Braves. First guy in history to play in an NFL and a Major League Baseball game in the same day. So stud athlete, but also just a genius at promoting, marketing, branding, and business. And so what he's done, and the lesson here for you and me is, he has completely disrupted an entire industry. College football and the way that they build their teams, the way that they recruit, the way that they form their rosters, the way that they run their programs, everyone kind of does it the same way, right? And there's a very specific method to it. And Deion Sanders has come in, uh, you know, gotten hired at Colorado as the head coach, And he completely is doing the opposite, just complete polar opposite. And what's happened is this, everyone is talking about it. No one can stop. I love this line from a story in The Athletic, the sports website. It said, it was quoting a coach or uh, an administrator in, you know, college football. And this person said, we know all eyes across all of college football are going to be on Colorado. What they're doing is going to impact the future of college football college football markedly for the next generation one way or another they're completely disrupting it and the takeaway for you and me is the biggest sin in marketing is being boring the biggest sin in marketing and branding and you know being out there is doing what everyone else is doing just blending in and when you're completely different radically different disruptively different in your marketplace in your industry People pay attention. So, you know, a great example of this is there was a a viral video that went out a few weeks ago of Colorado's spring uh, football game. Now, all the big college football teams have a spring football game, like a scrimmage, and the big programs, you know, thousands of people show up and fill the stadium just to watch the team, you know, scrimmage or practice. Colorado, of course, being down and out, nobody's been going to the spring practice. Nobody goes to the football games, right? So, So the spring football game in 2022, there's a video of it you know, panning from the press box, the field. And it looks like there's about 47 people. I'm serious. You can like count the number of people in the stands of this huge stadium. It's completely empty. 
And then they do this cutaway and they pan to the 2023 game a year later after Deion Sanders has hired 47,277 people. Like the stadium looks full, right? Just totally night and day difference. Uh, Again, everybody's talking about it. Everybody's talking about Colorado. Everybody's wondering. Everybody's curious. And that's what happens when you take actions to disrupt your industry. And again, the jury's still out on whether or not what Deion Sanders is doing will work. The way that he's running the program at Colorado, the way he's turning his roster over, the way he's, you know, being very just, I mean, crazy with the stuff he's saying in the media and just very out front and everything. Like, it may or may not work, but that's not the point for you and me. The point is, he's got everyone's attention, curiosity, eyeballs, interest. Everyone's watching every move Colorado's going to make. They are going to have all-time high ratings, attendance, merchandise sales, season ticket sales. So it's already a massive success from a business perspective. Um, And this is really the key for you and me is understanding and taking it into our own world, our own industry is, okay, how do I disrupt my industry? How do I do things differently? And so if I look at Deion Sanders and then look at my own business, there's some different ways to do this, to answer this question of how do I disrupt my industry by being different than everyone else who does what I already do, right? So I run a LinkedIn lead generation agency. Okay, how do I disrupt my industry? How do I be different? Well, one of the things is, you know, that Dion did is embrace the unexpected, right? Deion Sanders at Colorado is using this really radical, unconventional approach to roster management. He's really challenging the status quo, of how to run a football program at the division one level. And that's captured the attention of the entire college football world. Like everybody's talking about it. And I thought about my own agency and I thought, well, what are we doing that's different, unconventional or unexpected? And one of the things that we've done that I don't know of any of our quote unquote competitors do what we do when we work with clients, 99% of done for you, LinkedIn lead generation agencies, what they do is they just use templated kind of copy and paste fill in the blank scripts, right? Oh, we have a template to book meetings. Or we have a template to send for invites and, and it's one size fits all. And we just kind of use these, you know, templates. And what we decided was, you know, based on my belief in Dale Carnegie and how to win friends and influence people, the power of personalization is we actually write everything from scratch in a custom style based on our client's real voice and real words. And what we do is we simply record our client. We interview you. We do a Loom call, a Zoom, whatever. We record the call. We ask you a bunch of questions. You talk to us. You talk to us. You tell us about your business. You tell us about what makes you unique, different, better. You tell us about your ideal prospect. You tell us tales from the trenches of what you've done and how you've helped others and stories. You link us to blog posts or videos or podcasts that you've done explaining your story. We take all those transcripts and then we now create content based on what you've shared and it's in your voice it's using your word choices it sounds like you it feels like you it's your style it's your analogies it's your tone of voice it's your personality we put that through the content we create for you not just with linkedin and outbound you know messages invites etc but we do done for you content like ebooks and you know articles and things like that and the reason that works so well for our clients is when the prospect first gets to know our client online, right? What do they do? They consume content. They read blogs, articles, whatever. They get messages. It is a very distinct, unique tone and voice and style. It feels like it's coming from a real person. It doesn't feel like a template. It's, you know, as the client, it's basically taking the real life client and putting them through LinkedIn. Like, how would you explain yourself one-on-one? And what happens is then when that prospect moves forward in the process and gets on a live phone call or Zoom call with our client, there's connection and there's resonance. And it's like, oh, you're just like your messages. You're the same person. There's no bait and switch. I feel like I already know you. I've read your story and I really feel connected to you. And that's why that works so well on LinkedIn. But that's something we do that's very different, I would argue, than 99.9% of our competitors with LinkedIn lead generation. The other great thing that Deion Sanders is doing that you can also do is building a narrative, telling a story. What's the story of your brand? What's the story of your business, right? The story surrounding Colorado football is, whoa, Dion, this is different. Like, I'm not hard to find. I'm right here, Coach Prime. Like, we're doing things differently. Like, he has all these stories and hooks. Uh, For instance, when he came in and met with the returning football team, he took over the program. Here was last year's team from the old coach. He came in and said, listen, I want you guys to hop in that transfer portal as fast as you can. 
uh, I'm bringing my own baggage with me, and it's Louis Vuitton. Like, I'm bringing my own guys in. Um, I, you know, thanks for what you did for the program to now, but like, I'm not here to coddle you. I, I'm going to bring in the best players in the country. Probably none of you guys can qualify, so you might as well hit the portal. Uh, just being straight with you, right? And then he basically said to the outside world, hey, the door's open in Colorado. You want to play right away? You want to play for me, Hall of Famer, get to the NFL, play with the best guys in the country, hop in the transfer portal and come over. And they've like set records. Colorado has set records for people in and people out. Like they've had the biggest mass exodus of roster turnover ever. And then they've also had the biggest influx of people ever, like in a two month period, totally crazy, totally unconventional, but there's a story here. And the story is Dion does it his way. Like he's not listening to anyone. He's not following any norms. You have to pay attention because you don't know what he's going to do next, right? The story of Deion Sanders at Colorado is, what is he going to do next? Like, this is crazy. Like, we have to watch. Is this going to be a train wreck? Is it going to be an inferno? Or is it going to be redefining the whole college basketball or college football you know, industry for decades to come? Is Because you know what's going to happen. If Dion wins and wins big at Colorado, everyone's going to copy him. Everyone <laughs> like that's why everyone copied what Nick Saban did at Alabama. Right. And that's why everyone copied what so-and-so did at this team. Like everyone copies what wins, but regardless Dion's winning now because of his story, the best stories always win because we as humans are hardwired to consume content through story. Story is, you know, our love language. That's how we remember things. That's how we encode information. That's why as a little kid, you say, tell me a story. Tell me another story. Tell me another story at bedtime. Like that's, we want stories. And so what's the story around your brand? How do you bottle up your brand, your business into a story that is memorable, that resonates, that has hooks to it? So for me, I can say, with, you know, Nemo Media Group and the Done For You LinkedIn Lead Generation Agency, you know, my story is really one of how I built a seven-figure business from scratch using the most boring social media network on the planet, right? Like LinkedIn is as boring as it gets. And here I went and built a seven-figure business from scratch. And another part of my story is uh, I'm a walking dad joke. I am easily, without doubt, the worst dressed, uh, have the most horrible fashion sense, the biggest goofball in the history of the internet when it comes to LinkedIn lead generation, LinkedIn consulting, you name it. Like I, there is no competitor that I know of that wears Zubas on client calls. Right? <laughs> like I am a, my wife proves every single day that love is blind because literally yesterday we're all golfing and I had these ridiculous socks on and she's like, can I just give you a fashion tip? Like you don't wear like long pulled up tube socks with shorts. Like you, they have little ankle size socks you can wear with shorts now. I'm like, oh yeah, okay. You mean it's not the eighties? Like I'm not supposed to pull these up to my knees? Like I'm, I'm totally inept at fashion, but it's part of my story and it's part of my brand. And it's part of what makes me memorable is, you know, I have a photo on the front page of my website, nemomediagroup.com of me and Zubas. And I have another photo of me wearing a popcorn bucket on my head, playing Star Wars with one of my boys when we were, he was little. And again, I'm owning it. That's my brand. That's my story. And it's like, if this guy can make seven figures, what's holding you back, right? Like, that's part of my story is, honestly, I'm a regular everyday guy. Uh, I'm a stay-at-home dad. I've had fun with my kids. I'm not afraid to be funny and just be a goofball. And oh, by the way, you know, I'm going to give you permission to have fun at the same time. Like, you're allowed to be yourself and build your business. Like, the biggest advantage in today's marketplace is you. Like, your biggest advantage marketplace your biggest advantage in today's marketplace is you, your unique story, your unique personality, your communication style, whatever it is, because that's the only thing now that differentiates you from the competition. Every other service, every other offering, every other product has been commoditized, right? So there's a million LinkedIn lead generation agencies. There's a million LinkedIn lead generation coaches, whatever, whatever. What makes you unique, different, and better? Well, it's your story, right? It's your story. Obviously, your quality matters, all that thing, but at the end of the day, People are going to choose somebody they vibe with. They feel like, yeah, I would love to work with that person. It would be fun. I would enjoy them. Yes, their stuff looks great. Yes, their product or service can give me the end result I want. And I think they would be awesome, fun, enjoyable, whatever it is, right? That human connection. So that's another part is what's your story? How do you capture that in a way that captivates people, right? Don't you want to know more if I say, hey, do you want to hear the story behind how I quit my safe day job uh, with one client, enough money for 30 days. And oh, by the way, I was five figures in debt 
and I had three boys under the age of 10 at home, and my wife was home taking care of them, and I had to make it work, right? I quit a safe six-figure day job in 2012. That was the exact scenario. And here I am today, having built a seven-figure business from zero, uh, all with LinkedIn, the most boring network on the planet. Whoa, how'd you do that? What happened? Why did that work? What was your secret sauce, right? So now you want to know more. And that's the idea with, with the storytelling. And that really leads into the third key point is kind of fostering curiosity, right? Colorado's approach and what Deion Sanders is doing there has everybody asking questions. Everybody wants to know. And it's infectious. It's like a virus. Like, what's going on? What's going on? Why is he doing that? Oh, my gosh. Did you see that? The way that our brains are wired, right, that cave person brain, we're immediately, if, if something is familiar, uh, then we dismiss it. If something is weird or different or strange, we stop and we pay attention because our cave person brain says, "Uh uh-oh, this is new. I don't have a category for this. I have to analyze this and see, is it a threat? Is it not a threat? Is it something to worry about? Is it something to look more into? That's why when people, you know, are different, we stop and we pay attention. And that's why everyone is stopping and getting curious about Deion Sanders because it's not normal. It's not familiar. It's not what every other college football coach does. Watch a Deion Sanders press conference. He doesn't speak in jargon. He doesn't say a bunch of just throwaway lines like every other college coach. He just tells it like it is. And he's just like, you know, hey, this is what we're going to do. These kids aren't going to cut it. They're not good enough. I'm getting them out. Like he's just very straight. So you have to watch because you're like, this is unusual. This is different. And you're naturally curious. I want to know more. Why is he doing this? Is it going to work? Is it not going to work? Well, I got to tune in and find out. What's his team going to look like? He turned over 85% of his roster his first game is in a week. I want to watch. What happens? What's it going to look like? Well, the sky fall, right? You're curious. And that's the beauty of it. And so I even do this with my own marketing with you know my LinkedIn trainings. I say early on in my book, LinkedIn Riches, and some of my other materials, like, I really believe 99% of LinkedIn profiles, including yours, are set up wrong. And I can prove it. And people are like, whoa, what? I'm curious. What do you mean? Why do you think 99 profiles are set up wrong? And, and oh, okay, what, you know, what's wrong about it? I want to know. Like, how do I fix it? So you open up that loop of curiosity. Okay, if you're saying that, then why? What's going on here? Or I can say, hey, you know, I want to share a story about how a, a 60-second um, YouTube video got me a $10,000 contract what? Like, I'm curious. I want, and that's a real story, by the way, that I tell in my book and in my trainings of how sending one 60 second uh, LinkedIn video did get me a $10,000 marketing contract. So again, there's all these different loops and curiosities that you can use to keep people interested. So as we wrap this up, think about yourself, how can you disrupt your industry, right? What are some of like, sit and wrestle with these questions? Like, what are some of the common you know practices or beliefs or assumptions in your industry that you can challenge what can you do differently is there any gaps in how you see yourself and your competitors with delivering customer service or client onboarding or are you using using technology or not using technology uh are you doing anything unique or different with client retention or marketing copy like where are some places that you can be different and challenge does everybody do the same thing and buy facebook ads in your industry Go try something else, right? Do a billboard. I don't know. Like, try something different. Um, the other question to wrestle with, too, is like, what unique value or perspective can you bring to the table that will set you apart from the competition? What's your unique story, your unique value, your unique perspective? For me, it's, hey, listen, I literally built my business from scratch using LinkedIn. Like, literally, I had one client of money for 30 days. I had no budget. I was five figures in debt. Uh, I had my family at home. I had to figure this out. I couldn't go to trade shows. I couldn't buy advertising. I couldn't go network and do coffee meetings. So I used LinkedIn to get all my clients. And in 90 days at the time using, you know, just my laptop and me in a spare bedroom, folding card table, uh, got 135 grand in revenue in 90 days from new clients on LinkedIn. Oh, okay. That's a unique perspective. That's a unique approach. Or like I talked about earlier, I have a really unique perspective and approach on how to generate leads on LinkedIn in terms of how you craft content that you actually record the client, use the transcript and kind of repolish it, repurpose it, write it. So it sounds like the client and how they talk versus copy and paste robotic templates. Right? So that's another one. What's the unique value perspective you can bring? 
Here's a great one. What are some risks or, you know, bold moves you can make that might initially be met with skepticism? Because certainly there's going to be plenty of failure. There's going to be plenty of things that fall flat. And I'm sure even with Deion Sanders of Colorado, maybe some of the stuff he, do, he does will backfire. But that's not the point. The point is he's disrupting. And the reality is if you look at Netflix versus Blockbuster or Uber versus taxis or Airbnb versus hotels, like they completely disrupted the industry. And at the time, people thought it was crazy. People thought that I would never stay in a stranger's house. I would never get in a stranger's car. No way. And then it's like, well, wait, I get in every time I get in a taxi, I'm getting in a stranger's car. Like, what's the difference? Right. Or every time I go in a hotel, well, that's a strange building. I don't know. Like, you know, and, and again, now those are normal things. Now you get in a stranger's car every time you need a ride. Now you stay at a stranger's house when you go on vacation. It's not unusual anymore, but it was disruptive at the time. It was very disruptive. So what are some risks? What are some ideas? Try something new. You know, and, and that's the other thing is you can't be afraid to fail. Like, yes, vet your ideas and ask people, but then go act on it. The only way you're going to know if something's going to work for certain is to try. That That's what I've learned too. Like I've had multiple ideas that have failed. I've had multiple online courses that have failed, multiple approaches on LinkedIn that have failed, right? Multiple styles of copy, multiple, you know, ideas for webinars and videos and whatever. Like a good example I tell is, you know, and part of it's just resilience and not giving up. So when I was first starting out with LinkedIn lead generation, before I had the done for you agency, I had a book, LinkedIn Riches, and I had an online course also called LinkedIn Riches. And so I would do webinars to sell that. I would say, hey, come get on a live webinar. I'm going to teach you how to generate leads with LinkedIn, share my story, share some training. At the end, you know, I'll offer my online course. Well, I had to update and iterate and improve that webinar 47 times. I, I didn't settle, right? Because in the beginning, it didn't sell. And so each time after the webinar, anyone that attended, I would email them and say, hey, what did, and especially if they didn't buy, hey, thanks for attending. What did you find helpful? What did you like? What did you not like? I'm just looking for blunt, honest feedback so I can get better. And people would shockingly give feedback, right? Of course they would. They're, they're happy to tell you their opinion. I didn't like this part. I didn't find this helpful. That seemed too elementary. I felt like this part was pushy. I didn't think that was useful. Man, that really resonated with me. I wish you would have gotten to that point earlier. Or, you know what, what I was really looking for was this. And what I got was that. And, you know, if I was going to come again, I would really want to know it was more about this. And so I would take those comments and I would change the webinar again and again and again and again until I got it so dialed in that I knew that, hey, this formula now, after 47 iterations of the webinar, it's going to sell, right? So even on autopilot, um, somebody went through it the other day and bought the course uh, while I was sleeping, right? They went through the webinar, hit the buy button and bought. And that's where, you know, you have to be disruptive. You have to keep trying. You have to keep iterating. So, man, I could go on and on and on. But I think the biggest takeaway um, from this episode is just be disruptive, be different, like figure that out. Like if you really want to stand out quickly, disrupt, <laughs> do something different because it gets people talking. It gets people talking. It gets people curious. Now there's a story attached to it, like, why are you doing this? What's going on? And that's where attention goes. And where attention goes, then that's eventually where dollars will flow. Now, you look at Colorado, uh, they're going to count this as a win no matter what. Why? Because their merchandise sales are off the chart. Their season ticket sales are off the chart. Attendance is off the chart. Ratings are off the chart. Publicity, attention, social media engagement, is off the chart. That school's back on the map. They are now part of the national discussion. This whole season, whether it's a train wreck or whether they win the national championship, is only going to add to the interest, add to the attention, add to the engagement. And now they're going to have all these platforms to build off and pivot and do different things. And that's the genius of what Deion Sanders is doing. And that's the genius of what disruptors do in their industry. So there you go. Hope you find this helpful. I'll put some links in the show notes if you want to go deeper on any of this. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you soon on another episode.